Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the study manual for the T's. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number. 106. Let's turn to it. Page 106 and today is our lesson number 52. Today we will solve this linear equation that you see there 2.61. 2.61. Let's take a look at it. Two sixty-one. It says x over 6 minus 1 third is equal to x over 2 plus two-third. This is a simple linear equation. It's a linear equation because x is raised to the first power. That's all. By the way, if this is something that you're not very good at, if this is something that you feel that you need more practice on, on my video you will find altogether actually 200 videos. I was about to say 100 videos. You will find the first is the algebra, is the course in algebra. Uh, it is divided up into two parts. Uh, first part consists of 100 videos as you see here on the blackboard and then from day 101 through 200 you will find videos on word problems. But if something like this gives you trouble, if you want to get better at solving linear equations, there are, where is it, right here, there are 15 videos, day number 86 through 100 is when we learn how to solve linear equations. Here is the course schedule, you, as I said you will find these videos on my channel, just look for algebra videos. Uh, first 20 days we learn how to evaluate algebraic expressions. Then we learn how to add and subtract algebraic expressions from day 21 through 50, the 30 days. From days 51 through 75, for the next 25 days, we learn how to multiply the algebraic expression. Then we learn how to divide the algebraic expression. And then finally, last 15 days of the first part of the course, day 86 through 100, we learn how to solve linear equations. This is exactly what this is. Let's get going, shall we? When we're solving for a variable, when we're solving for a variable, the first thing we need to do, very first thing we need to do, is to get the, all the unknown quantities on one side and all the known quantities on the other side. Separate them as quickly as possible, as quickly as possible, as efficiently as possible. Do you understand? As efficiently as you can possibly do. Do you understand? So that's what we're going to do here. How can we bring this x to this side? Well, that's very straightforward. Subtract, this is the positive x over 2, subtract x over 2 from this side. And subtract x over 2 from this side. This is positive. And we have to bring this known quantity, which is negative one third, to that side. How do you do that? Well, add one third to this, this side and add one third to this side. That's it. Remember, these are the two separate parts of the equation here. Do you understand? I shouldn't have put the line like that because it might confuse you or it may not. But anyway, there's a clear demarcation there as to this side of the equation and that side of the equation. So what do we have then? As you notice here, we have a negative one-third and a positive one-third, which was the whole point. We wanted to get rid of this one-third from this side. We have done that. Negative one-third and a positive one-third, they will kill each other. And here also you notice that we have positive x over 2 and a negative x over 2. They will also cancel each other out. What, what are we left with on this side? We are left with two-third and a one-third. How much is two-third and a one-third? If you have a two-third and a one-third, one, two, three, but two-third and a one-third is a whole. So two-thirds plus one-third is just one. What do we have here? We have x over 6 minus x over 2. Now the story will begin. x over 6 and x over 2. In order for us to be able to, in order for us to, be able to solve, uh, add these two fractions, we have to have common denominator. And the common denominator, of course, will be 6. In other words, Multiply the top and the bottom of this thing by, by 3. That's what we're talking about. So now we have 2 times 3 here. We have 6 here. 2 times 3 is 6. Here we have 6. So we have a common denominator of 6. And we get x minus 3 times x, which is 3x, equals to 1. So we don't want the 6 at the bottom. The, 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 the 6 at the bottom is actually annoying. we got to get rid of it. So we multiply both sides of the equation by 6. And now we can get rid of 6. And what are we left here? We are left with x minus 3x x minus 3x is negative 2x. Negative 2x equals 1 times 6, which is 6. But we don't want negative 2 times x, we just want x by itself. So we have to divide both sides. We have to divide both sides of the equation by negative 2. 
Now this negative 2 will cancel out with this negative 2 and we are left with just the x which is equal to 6 over negative 2 which gives us negative 3. Very good, there is your answer, negative 3 is the answer. Our answer is negative 3. What we are claiming is that x equals negative 3. Now what we should do at this point is to go back if the time allows during the exam, if time allows. If it doesn't, if you are if you're, if you're running behind then don't worry about it, you have the answer. But if it's not too complicated and if the time allows, you should actually go back plug this value, uh, this value of x back in the equation and see if it actually makes sense. The way the mathematician would say is that, this is how we speak in, in the language of mathematics, what we say is, take this value of x, put it back in the equation and see if the equation is satisfied. Let's see if it satisfies the equation. So we're going to do that. Let's do it here. Or can we do it? Let's do it on the top here. I need the room so I need to erase everything before I actually do that. I'm going to get out of your way for a second. Alright, so here we go. This is negative one third and this is x over 2. x over 2 and negative one third. So we see x is equal to negative 3. So put it in here, negative 3 over 6 minus 1 over 3 and here we have negative 3 over 2 plus 2 over 3. And now the story begins. Let's find the common denominator of 6 from both sides. So if you want the common denominator of 6 here, we have to multiply this top and bottom by 2. One third, let's multiply this thing top and bottom by 2. It's okay for us to multiply any quantity by top and bottom by 2 because if you multiply something by 2 over 2, you're essentially multiplying it by 1. You can multiply any quantity by 1 and not change this value. Similarly here, we have negative 2 over 3. We're going to multiply the top and bottom by 3 and we're going to multiply the top and bottom of this thing by 2. Now everything has a denominator of 6. So watch what happens. So here we have 6 and here we have 6, so it's 6 and then this thing is negative 3, negative 1, negative time, 1 times 2 is 2, so it's negative 2 and here we have 3 times negative 3, 3 times negative 3 is negative 9 and then 2 times 2 is 4 and we have a plus sign in between. And since they have the same denominator, since they have the same denominator, the, the denominator no longer plays any role. We're taking a sixth of both quantity and all we have to make sure is that these two quantities are equal and if, as long as these two quantities are equal then the value of the variable that we found negative 3 is correct as, as long as these two quantities are equal let's find out shall we negative 3 and negative 2 is negative 5 and negative 9 and positive 4 is also negative 5 so it checks out it is the correct it is the correct answer x equal to negative 3 is indeed the correct value of the variable i'll see you tomorrow okay bye now